attached to a U.S. case. I was able to work that, that case in Puerto Cortez only because the bad guys had called into the United States trying to sell kids into the United States. That was the only reason I could work that case. If that little piece doesn't happen, and, and most of the time that doesn't happen, we can do nothing because there's no U.S. law being violated. And I decided that maybe I should try to do something about it. That maybe we should, we should leave and create this organization, this private organization. But that's a scary thing to do. And so the thought would come in and, and go right out. Because how am I going to pay for these six kids that I have? And as, as starting a, a non-profit charity organization, it was a scary thought. And then something happened, uh, an event that, that really pushed us to do this. I was, I was driving from, I lived in California at the time, and I was driving from San Diego to a little town called El Centro. Okay, that's, that's, where, that's where your young woman's president was raised, in El Centro. And, and that's where they're from. And we were, I was living there working as an agent. And we were driving, and I was driving, and Annie was with me. Annie was asleep. She was, this was several years ago. And I got this feeling, this prompting. And I said, you've got to move to Utah. And, and, and believe me, I, I, no offense to Utahns, okay, but I, that wasn't even on my short list or my long list of, any, of things to do. I didn't have family there. I didn't have any reason to be there. I went to BYU, and I was happy to go back to California, okay? Uh, and I was afraid to even tell my wife about the feelings I was having, and they kept coming back. I didn't even know why. Eventually, Catherine learned that we needed to go to Utah. We didn't know why. We thought it was because maybe our kids needed to be raised there. Who kn we didn't know. But we, we, we decided to follow the promptings. I was grateful for the prompting. Um, it became more of a revelation than a prompting after a while, and we just were going to go. And, and, and we wanted to know why we should go. Why do we need to go and do this? Why do we need to go to, to, uh, to Utah? It's cold in Utah. And, and, and California is not cold. And, and so why do we do this? And I remember it was on a Tuesday night, my wife and I went, went to the San Diego Temple, and we went there to ask Heavenly Father why we needed to go to Utah. And, and, and if he didn't want to tell us, fine, we'd still go. We, we already had done things. We, we put things in motion. We put our house up and looked for, we're buying another house. We, we knew we were going to go. Okay, can we know why? And we came out of the temple, and... And I said, did you, did you get the answer? Because I, I didn't get anything. And, and she says, no, I didn't get anything either. Like, shoot. Um, well, so we, we, we went home. And the next morning, we were, we were doing, um, you guys ever heard of a thing called P90X? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, you heard P90X? Yeah. So we were like into P90X at that time. It's a, it's, a, it's a home workout. You go work out, you work out at your home with all these crazy exercises. So we're working out the next morning. And... And I remember I just stopped working out and I sat down. And I, just did, I, was, I was dizzy. And, and, uh, and I, um, I told Catherine, I said, you won't believe this. I know why we're going. I know why we're going to Utah. And, and I remember she, she'll remember I was so excited because it just, like, it just like came to me so quickly. And it was to find the lost children. And I, knew, I, had, I had never really used that phrase before. I didn't know, you know, it wasn't something I'd said or used before, but I knew exactly what it meant when it came to me. And it was almost like I heard it or saw it or some combination, but it was so clear to find the lost children. I knew what it meant. It meant all those kids that no one was going to find, that, that fell outside of the jurisdiction of the United States government, the kids we could not help. I was supposed to go to Utah because that was going to lead me to ha somehow find a way to find them. And, and I was thinking, like, well, maybe in the government, maybe I'll get to the Salt Lake office, the Homeland Security office where I work, and, and that they would somehow make the right connections for me. I, I didn't know. But at that same time, within, I don't know, 30, 40 minutes maybe, we were still in our workout clothes, and I was still kind of, like, I can't believe this. Is the, I, I know why, at least. I don't know how, but I know why. We get a knock at our door. And, and who enters but this, this, the, the first counselor in the state presidency? In, in our state, and he and, and he didn't come over our house every day, right? It wasn't like I was, you know. He he he, he comes in, 
and he has tears in his eyes. And I'd never seen him with tears in his eyes before. And and he says he says, Tim, I the Lord told me to come over to your house right now because he wants me to help you start a private organization to rescue kids from trafficking. And I'm just going, you, you can't, you, gotta, you don't believe this. I just, I, just 30 minutes ago, I had this experience, and now you come to, I mean, it was, it was the most unbelievable assurance that this is what we were supposed to do. And I was so grateful that my wife was worthy of the Spirit and that I was worthy of the Spirit. That I didn't have a pornography problem that would have obstructed that. And that we were able to know what we were supposed to do. And then we moved to Utah. And we met all the people. I, I don't have time to get into it, but it was clearly we had to be there because all the people that were instrumental in building Operation Underground Railroad came to us. And within a year, we were off and running and, and, and out rescuing kids. And, and one of the very first kids we went to rescue, who, who no one was looking for, is this little guy right here. I keep this in my scriptures. I wasn't necessarily going to tell this story. I, I keep this in my scriptures all the time. I told his father, I, I will keep his picture here until I find your son. And he was kidnapped. He was, he's, he's an LDS. He's a Mormon boy. He was kidnapped in a, in a church in Port-au-Prince, Haiti, and, and taken and trafficked. And, and this poor father, he was the bishop. And they didn't know where to go, who to turn to, or how to find their boy. They don't have resources. And we were able to come in, we were able to come in, and, and we did find the people that we believe were responsible. And we went and did an, a, 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 a sting operation, an undercover operation, where we went into this place where we think Guardy had been trafficked through, and there was 28 other kids who were being sold on the black market between the ages of 5 and, and, and 13, 14. And we went undercover and we bought these kids from the bad guys with the Haitian police to prove that they were they were bad and they're doing this and all those kids got rescued and three people went to jail and um, Jimmy mentioned that two, two of the little kids actually the two we bought the cutest little kids I've ever seen uh, three and four years old um, we're in the process of trying to adopt them and bring them home to, to, to live with us um, another interesting thing that happened in that case and a, a guardy wasn't there this little boy wasn't there he'd already been trafficked on 